you were involved with a project for Radio for Europe where performance really required more than just speed, right? It was about true accessibility. How did that shape your thinking on performance? Yeah, that was uh, that was interesting because Radio Free uh, Europe is their their whole point is to spread information in areas of the world where that information is meant to be bottled up and controlled, not freely distributed. Uh, so they have some serious uh, difficulties doing that. They have some serious challenges. They're dealing with things like uh, poor connectivity and low power devices, as well as. Uh, countries and governments that have actually you know, banned their content, and so people have to use proxy browsers and proxy devices to try and get through that. And in some cases, it's actually punishable by death to access those sites. So it's a pretty... Its performance takes on a, a whole different realm of importance when you're dealing with whether or not somebody can access it at all and when their life is on the stake versus you know the typical business things that we're used to. So it was really interesting. It was interesting to try and balance providing a really nice experience to people but also finding a way to get that information to them as quickly as possible under really less than ideal circumstances that we honestly just don't right. ever experience here. Yeah, I would imagine when we talk about accessibility, we're not talking about that threshold. No, not to that degree, no. Yeah. And, and I, I like the tie-in with performance and accessibility, though, because I think that that's, and, and I think it was uh, amplified with the Radio Free Project, but I think that the two go hand in hand. You know, performance really is about making it accessible for people to get onto those different devices and access that content, no matter what the scenario is, right. which we know varies dramatically. Is there a tendency for web developers when they're encountering a new web technology to kind of take a perspective of filling it up rather than, than just applying those technologies? I think, I think um, I don't think intentionally. Yeah. You know, I don't think anybody intentionally sets out to fill up the page. But I do think that that's often what happens uh, because... Uh, it kind of goes back to a similar concept of you know the way we view the internet and experience the internet being quite different than our users and, and the people we're trying to reach around the globe, um, because we have very powerful machines, very powerful networks, and so we reach for these new tools and these new techniques that, um, and we put them into the page and think that they're addressing our issues, and we don't see the performance repercussions of them because we don't see that in our environment. So I don't think it's intentional, but it does happen. Yeah. What's your take on things like Facebook's instant articles, which I know it seems like a weird thing to bring up, but in many ways that seems to be a way of getting around some of the speed issues that the web has. It is. Uh, you know, I think it was interesting that they're pushing performance as the primary feature for that. First off, that's kind of a cool thing, right, yeah. when somebody like that is saying performance is our big selling point for this huge feature we just rolled out. Uh, I don't, I, you know, they made a big point in the... In the, the announcement to point out how slow the mobile sites can be versus their instant articles. Uh, I think in that they're kind of serving as like an easy fix for a lot of publishers in that way. Uh, you know, I think that that I, I think that they're, they have a point because the mobile web is pretty slow right now, but I don't think that that's a technical limitation of the web. It feels like that's more of a choice on our part of not actively mm. uh, optimizing for performance in, under those different conditions and scenarios. So I hope, I, I actually don't hate the instant articles thing. I hope that it ends up being a kick in the pants for everybody who's working on the web to say, okay, we can, we can do better for performance and we have to do better so that we can still control our content and have it going through our sites instead of relying on you know, somebody like Facebook inside of their garden to be able to provide that for us. What is the single biggest technical or coding issue that you're running into right now? I think right now it's a cultural thing primarily. I think that we've made huge advancements on the tooling and the techniques and the browser behavior. We've come a long way. And I think right now it's just it's it's getting to the point where organizations are understanding the implications of well, like going back to what you said, filling up versus applying, and thinking very deliberately about performance and making sure that it's baked into the process, uh, and that we're actively not just testing for it, but enforcing certain limits through a performance budget and things like that. Unfortunately, the cultural stuff is also what takes the longest time to to, to change. So it's a slow process, uh, but I think that's the biggest one. Related to that, what was the biggest issue you were encountering five years ago? Probably similar, but but in a different vein. I think five years ago we had a hard time getting the performance to matter to people outside of uh, the already invested in that area, the crowd. You know, Velocity did a, was doing has been doing a great job for a while on that, and there's always been a core group of people that have been pushing at performance, but it hadn't really spread to the wider discussion in terms of the web. Uh, we've seen that change quite a bit. You know, performance is a hot topic uh, at all sorts of web events and 
people, you know, blog posts and articles and books. I think it's getting more and more attention now. So um, I think that that has it's dramatically improved, and we've come a long way. It's been a really encouraging, I think, a really encouraging five years. We've got a ways to go, uh, but there's been a lot of progress. Last question for you: What people or projects are you following these days? Uh, I pay very close attention to uh, a lot of anybody who's really working on sort of the edge of the mobile. Uh, responsive Internet of Things sort of stuff. Uh, from a performance perspective, uh, Filament Group does amazing things around responsive design, which is great. Uh, I think that um, I'm really intrigued by some of the physical web stuff that Google is working on, where you're going to be basically able to atta- uh, interact with objects via web URLs. And I think there's going to be some really interesting challenges and implications of performance in a world where people are expecting to interact instantly with objects. I think that's going to shift a lot of our discussion, and I think it's going to put a lot of focus on perceived performance and designing for that stuff. Great. Well, thank you for being with us. No, thank you.